that leads me to a great topic because I know, Dow, you have a pretty robust program in place for fostering a diverse and inclusive environment, both internally in addition to some of the vendors that you work with. And Eileen and Sue, I know you both have a little bit of a human resources background, so I'd love to ask you, um, from a company perspective, what are some things that you all do or have seen to be successful um, in terms of fostering that culture inside your business? Well, I mean, so we view diversity and inclusion as a strategic business imperative. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really, we look at it from two different angles. Um, the first is about our culture and how do we make sure that we're doing the things we need to do to ensure our culture is inclusive. Um, our women's network and our other networks are very important, but it's important that the men are involved and engaged. Right, so right. we do a lot of things focused on our culture and on all of our professionals. And then from the side of our women, we do a lot to make sure that they're raising their hand, that they're mm -hmm. really seeking out mentors and sponsors. And right. um, when a door's open for them, they're running through it. Right. Um, so it's it's really focusing on both because we know that, you know, to your point earlier, the more inclusive we are, the more innovative we will be because you're bringing diverse perspectives to the table. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our goal is to bring the best solutions to our clients. Um, and so having a diverse team, we really feel does that much better. Absolutely. That's a great point. Yeah, so at Excel Catlin, we've sort of doubled down on diversity and inclusion in the last few years with a strong emphasis on getting more women into leadership roles. And so we actually have been very, very clear about that goal and we're measuring that goal. And we've also looked at what we think some of the levers are that will enable it. So we're doing some things around um, really modernizing our family leave policies mm -hmm. and making sure that um, when someone has a baby, it might be a woman, it might be a same-sex couple, whatever, that they are going to get paid leave, right? And so we've, we've upped that. When someone has to care for a family member, um, that they get more than the, you know, the couple of days that, that, that the leave policy will allow them. So we've really modernized our leave policies globally. We've really pushed flexible work arrangements globally. Mm -hmm. And we are, you know, and those are some of the tools that we're using. We, we insist on diverse slates for every single job that's open uh, at a leadership level. It must be diverse as defined by at least one woman is interviewed by a decision maker. So mm -hmm. those are the things that we're trying to be. We're not trying to be all things to everyone. And that's um, not always the most popular thing because we're very, very clear in what we're measuring. We're also working though, as Sue said, on inclusion. And so if you have an inclusive environment where everyone feels valued and welcome, then it's going to beget diversity. It's just right. going to enable greater diversity. So yeah. it's kind of a, 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 a two-tiered sort of, uh, or two-pronged approach in these early days. And um, we, we feel good about it, which is why LPGA comes in as Absolutely. an awesome partner. Yeah, and you hit on a great point. It's, it's the feeling valued and welcome. Yes. It seems like that is the key that opens up the doors for everybody. For to come everyone. In. Absolutely. Yes. And and that brings me to, you know, just how excited we are to be partnering with each of you because um, you know, you are the leaders, the thought leaders in this space, and uh, there's so much that we can do for golf to make women feel value, valued and welcome in this space.